Here's a picture again of the Atlas experiment. Um, we have here at the uh, top uh, left, we have a looking down the beam. We have these things going off sideways. I told you that's what didn't happen in normal events. So we're trying to trigger on this dramatic junk, not junk, dramatic energetic particles going off transverse to the beam. And um, this is, you know, run 190878, event 1965, and this remarkable event happened. It's very, very rare. And here is it shown actually within the apparatus. Uh, here's where the beam comes in here. The other beam comes in there, they collide here. And then the offshoot, and then these things at the side are where most of the measurement is done. You do not measure in detail the particles that go very fast in the direction of the, pro the protons, because it's a very hard to measure there, because there's such a lot of beam material there. And also, it's just not interesting. You do not get interesting physics from that. You get the same physics as we studied for many years, and we're not trying to study that in these experiments. Here's a Pretty picture of uh, showing the detail, but you notice these curved particles. These are curved because this, uh, all these uh, experiments have giant magnetic uh, magnets in the actual experiment. They're the magnets that keep the protons going round and round the ring. But there's also, when they collide, you have other magnets which um, measure, which, sorry, they measure the momentum of the particles by bending them. So by the curvature of these uh, tracks, uh, the more curved they are, the lower the momentum. And you can then measure the momentum of the particles. And these are the signals you get when the particles enter so-called calorimeters, which respond to the uh, impact of uh, particles. So this is, um, these things here are the uh, photons. Which are the remember one of the places we, one of the decay channels of the Higgs was two photons, and as I said, the orange bar tracks are charged, and they're mainly forward and back. You can see that, but again, there are some sideways. Here's an interesting um, plot, which is uh, that's the type of this plot on the left is the type of thing I used to work on when I was a child. Um, you try to calculate how, what the cross section or the probability of two protons producing something. So the the basic probability is up here. It's uh, somewhere around 50 millibarns. Um, a barn is 10 to the minus 4, 24 centimeters squared, and um, that's. Uh, that effectively measures the transverse area of a proton, and it's related to the um, linear size of, of the proton, which is always measured in Fermi's, which uh, Fermi is 10 to the minus 13 centimeters. That square is 10 to the minus 26. And um, actually, the area of the, of the uh, Proton is about uh, five, 50 millibarns, so that's 5 times 10 to the minus 26. So they're all roughly consistent. We have, we're living in this world of 10 to the minus 13 centimeters. And here we have the, the usual event. And then back down here, how many orders of magnitude? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Down 11 orders of magnitude, or 12, or 13. Here we have Higgs particles. So they're very improbable. That's why you need this incredible trigger to get rid of the normal events. In fact, when you do measurements, the apparatus is um, has memory. Because um, you, you, you know, when you measure in these ionized chambers, they actually remember for a certain length of time. When you're taking data so quickly that you uh, remember several previous events, actually here, they says there's 30 typical events in any one real event. Unfortunately, the memory doesn't matter too much because the typical events do nothing interesting, so it's very easy to ignore them. The chance of getting two interesting events is negligible. What's in, what is true is you'll get 30 of events up here where there's nothing interesting happening together with one of these. And you just have to remove the stuff corresponding to that sample.
And here, of course, is the having introduced Feynman diagrams. Here's the proton and the proton. You have the Higgs produced, and this one is. We actually showed this Feynman diagram. Uh, two uh, weak bosons, the Z's, and the Z's decay into mu plus, mu minus, and mu plus, mu minus, and that's the four lepton final state with the Higgs, which uh, they, which was looked at. Notice you have these different ones here. We have the two photon uh, decay mode for the Higgs, and the four lepton decay mode for the Higgs. So phenomenologists, like I used to be, try to tell people which which are the great places to um, to look for Higgs. Where is the signature likely to be? And they give approximate predictions for how the particles would look. 